Hello, uh, welcome to uh, the latest uh, COVID-19 Carroll County uh, virtual public forum. Uh, my name is Kyle Uveling. I'm a cardiologist with the Iowa Heart Center in Carroll and I serve as chief medical officer for St. Anthony Regional Hospital. With us tonight is Dr. John Evans, a family medicine physician from the McFarland Clinic in Carroll. Uh, Nikki Schwering, a registered nurse and the director of Carroll County Public Health. Sarah Schulte, a registered nurse with Carroll County Public Health, who's also been very instrumental with the vaccine rollout the, the last several months. And then we have a special guest, uh, Destiny Simons, an Arcadia resident who contracted COVID-19 and has agreed to share her experience with us and with the public. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for viewing tonight. Uh, you might notice if you're watching this on different versions of media that you might only be seeing one segment at a time. Uh, there's links uh, to the St. Anthony webpage that'll be able to show you the entirety of uh, this video. So to start off with, uh, I'd like to just go through some statistics on where we are the first week of May 2021 uh, compared to where we've been previously. So our current positivity rate is 5.3% as of today. Now, if we go back four or five months, we were frequently encountering positivity rates in the 25%, 20%. There were state benchmarks at 15% that if we could get below that, uh, certain good things could happen as far as uh, restrictions on uh, travel, things like that. Uh, it's wonderful that we've gotten down to 5%. We have seen a little bit of an uptick over the end of March and beginning of April, probably coinciding with travel and get togethers, things like that. But overall, it's markedly improved, undoubtedly because of a, a successful vaccine rollout thus far. Uh, the vaccination rate, uh, we can use kind of two different numbers. As of right now, 41% of Carroll County's uh, total residents have been vaccinated. That means they've completed either their Johnson & Johnson vaccine or they've completed both of their Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. If we look at just Carroll County residents who are eligible, which means 16 years old and above, uh, at least 65 plus percent have received one injection. We're doing very well. For the better part of uh, April, Carroll County was in the top five uh, states or counties in the state of Iowa out of the 99 for vaccination rate. Uh, we'd like to see this continue. We'd like to see Carroll County to still be at the forefront, uh, leading the state and helping all of us out as neighbors, uh, getting back to normal activities. Uh, there are three current vaccines still approved. Uh, the Pfizer, which is two injections, three weeks apart. Uh, those are, uh, it's eligible currently for 16 year olds and above, but We'll talk uh, later through this process that that may change next week. Uh, the efficacy of the Pfizer vaccine uh, has been published at being 95%, meaning a 5% chance of getting a symptomatic case of uh, COVID-19. Now, we'll also talk about how that efficacy may be different on different variants of COVID-19 later in this talk. The Moderna is two injections four weeks apart, and that's currently eligible for 18-year-olds and above. Uh, the efficacy was very similar, 94.1% compared to the 95% for uh, uh, the Pfizer. So the Johnson & Johnson is different. It's a different technology than the uh, Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. Uh, the efficacy is, the published efficacy is a little less. Um, it was in the 80%, uh, it's, but it's in a single injection, uh, which offers a great deal of benefit uh, for logistics, for people having to get into a vaccination clinic once versus twice, and also for transport. Uh, all three vaccines uh, look like they have a slightly less efficacy against the UK variant of COVID-19 than the original wild type uh, from 2019 that we dealt with in 2020, but still more than adequate. It is still uh, the best way of controlling not just the uh, wild type, but the UK variant and possibly future variants. It is free for individuals. Now, many clinics may ask for your insurance information. That's because for the supplies, for the uh, staffing, uh, insurance may be charged for that, but in the state of Iowa, there is to be no uh, individual contribution. So your insurance should not put any of that vaccination charge onto you, and it, that has been the case for the last several months. So with that kind of background, uh, I'd like to reintroduce Destiny. Uh, again, uh, she's an Arcadia resident who's agreed to share her story of contracting COVID-19 with us and with the public. So I, I turn the mic over to you. Thank you, Dr. Duvalain, and thank you for having me. Um, December 31st of 2020, I tested positive for COVID-19. Um, my 
first initial symptoms were um, not being able to taste or smell. Um, I first realized it when I um, couldn't smell um, and I was um, a little concerned at that point. I went in and got tested and I tested positive. Um, I was very achy. I had a slight cough. I never did run a fever the entire time I had COVID. Um, and I just felt um, lethargic. Um, I would have chills. Um, and my days went on like that for about a week. And then um, the following Wednesday, I woke up and I was severely short of breath. Um, my pulse ox, which I kept checking at home, um, was in the lower 80s and I was not um, feeling the best. So I called my doctor um, and he had me come into the hospital, um, went to the ER. They ran a bunch of, of tests on me. They did a chest film, um, EKG, um, things like that. Um, they did end up admitting me. Um, my O2 sat was, like I said, in the lower 80s and um, my uh, D-dimer was elevated. So I was at risk for blood clots. Um, so they put me on blood thinners um, and they uh, put me on remdesivir, which was the um, IV um, medication for COVID-19. I was in the hospital for um, five days and I had... Um, a collapsed left lung, pneumonia in my right lung. Um, I was not doing well. I was very scared um, and very concerned, um, but I had very good care. I was here at St. Anthony and I was taken very good care of um, while I was here. Um, I then was discharged on day number five, um, went home and I was doing fine, still very short of breath. Um, still very achy, um, cough. Every time I coughed, my chest hurt really bad. I just felt like, um, I had something stabbing me in the middle of my chest. No one else in my family, um, got it. Um, my daughter was vaccinated, um, and she, um, stayed in a different room, obviously. Um, my husband was in a different room than me. Um, and I, um, continued along with that progress. I stayed on, um, inhaled steroids, oral steroids, um, uh, blood thinner, um, various, um, vitamins, vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, um, and they kept me, um, very, you know, um, at ease that I felt like I was getting better. Then, um, I developed COVID hands and feet, where I had blisters on the bottoms of my feet and on my both my hands, um, very painful. They were kind of like water blisters. Um, and I had that um, for a good two weeks. Um, and then I developed shingles the following week on the top of my head. Um, and um, so I dealt with that. Um, I uh, have had an echo of my heart and everything came back fine with that. Um, they did have me do pulmonary um, function testing, and I have developed asthma related to the COVID. Um, they obviously don't know if the asthma is going to go away in time um, or if I'm going to continue to have it. So I still use the inhaled steroids um, and a rescue inhaler. I still am on baby aspirin. Um, I am off of the injectable blood thinners that I was put on when I was in the hospital um, because my um, risk for blood clots was elevated. Um, and I had sweats, chills, um, cough, uh, body aches, hair loss, um, fatigue. Um, I ached everywhere. I had memory loss. I almost started my kitchen on fire um, <laughs> because I forgot that I put... Um, grilled cheese on the stove. Um, and uh, it took me a long time to get my um, full function back where I felt like I could walk up and down my stairs where I could walk around my house. Um, and now I'm going to pulmonary rehab here at St. Anthony. Um, I'm on my third week um, and it's helping me a lot. Um, I feel like um, the shortness of breath is still there when I am exerting or doing any type of um, exercise but it's still, it's still there, but it is improving over time. I was off of work for a total of 12 weeks and um, I felt um, like even at that point, it was hard for me to go back to work. Um, I was uh, very tired, uh, couldn't hardly get through a whole day. So I went back four hours a day 
um, for two weeks. And then after that, I went back to my regular eight hours. So um, I, I feel like um, I'm definitely improving, but it's been a very scary process. So uh, last week of December was the infection date or diagnosis date. We're Correct. now uh, four complete months past that. Right. What percentage would you say you are back to the way you felt at the beginning of December? In other words, you know, weeks before you caught this. Probably 60 to 70%. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm getting there. It's just a long process. And so I just, the shortness of breath and the chest pain is still there. So I've always been a little uh, uncomfortable with the term long hauler because I don't know if, you know, what, how would you describe the, the, the prolonged symptoms, things like that? What, what phrase or how, how would you describe it? Um, I, I still feel like the shortness of breath and the chest pain was the same at the beginning, just not as severe. Um, and I feel like new things pop up. It's not just the same symptoms I had at the beginning. It's new things that come up. Um, I've gotten the blisters back on my hands two times. Um, I, um, have had new sores on my head, um, since I've had it, um, and been back to work. I've had, um, still the, the sweating at night. Like, I feel like I, um, uh, my temperature is changing. Like I could be running a fever. I never have, but I have felt like that. Um, and it is, it's a long process. So COVID long hauler is, is a good description just because it's COVID that's lasting a long time. And I feel like eventually, hopefully it will go away completely, but no one knows that. And so it is scary. And I hope that other people don't have to experience it. I do know a gentleman um, from my hometown um, that lives in Ankeny that is, um, was in the hospital for 144 days with COVID. And um, so there are much worse situations. I never had to be on a ventilator. I didn't have to have oxygen, um, but my symptoms were very severe. Well, thank you, Destiny. Um, I, I really appreciate it. I, I think, uh, you know, the, the four of us have done uh, quite a few of these talks, but it, it, I think it really helps also to, to hear from somebody who's experienced it like you have. Well, thank you for having me. And I hope that if people have questions, they can always reach out to me and ask me questions. And I know all of you are willing to do the same for them. So I appreciate you having me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night.